Craig here and I figured I'd create a quick video tutorial and in this video what I'm going to be doing is creating a blog header or logo type image for a blog you know a, a graphic to put up here in the header area so normally I use Photoshop or GIMP but Photoshop is very expensive and GIMP is free but it's a huge download and it's a bit scary if you've never done anything like it before and then I came across this website called pixlr.com slash editor. So what I'm going to do is show you how I created uh, this image right here. So what I do is head over to the website and click on create new image. And then we have some dimensions, width and height. Now I know that I want something around 500 pixels in width and 100 pixels in height. So the presets, there isn't anything that I can use. So what I'm going to do is just enter in my own width, 500. It does have like this slider up and down, but it's very hard to get it on what, what you want. So I find it easier to just enter in your size. Uh, we'll leave it on the name as untitled. and I want it to have a transparent background. Now I'm going to click OK. Now I have to warn you for some reason with this, because it's like a web-based program. And whenever I record my screen, maybe it's my laptop, it's not the greatest. Uh, things get a little bit laggy but when I'm not recording uh, my mouse movement is very smooth all right let's get going here and the first thing I want to do is pick my uh, my text tool so I'm going to click on a down here and I'm going to click in my image area and when I click it creates a new layer what I want to do now is enter in my blog title so my dog training website as you can see, when I move my cursor out of the text area and over here, it changes to a dark color. And basically, that tells me it's now a move tool. So I can move this wherever I want to. And I can change the text color, which I definitely want to do. So I want to change it to like a bluish color and then click OK. My text color has changed. Now I can change it to like a bold text. I have to make sure that it still fits on my screen. Now there's a, a whole bunch of different text styles of text you can pick from uh, and simply by scrolling down it's going to give you a little preview of each one I recommend you go with something that's somewhat bold and easy to uh, see like I'm okay with that one now I'm just going to move it over a touch and I'm going to press OK now I want to put my blog subheadline or you know just a line of something below it so I'm going to click here and it's going to create another layer, layer 2. And I forget what did I put on here, tips and tricks to train your dog. So I'm going to enter in a dog. No, that's good enough. Now I always recommend the subheadline be a different style of text and also smaller because it's not the main headline. So let's first find a different kind of text. Mm, that was probably good enough. I need to change the size of the text. Let's see if we can make this bold. And I want to change the color. It's good enough. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a layer style because right now my text is a little bit boring and it's there's no kind of pop in it. it doesn't really stand out. So I want to add a style to my text. So I'm going to click on this layer, my dog training website. And I'm going to come up to layer. And then I'm going to, where is it, layer styles. And I want to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to move this over. If I put a check here, you'll see that it adds drop shadow. But if I click on the words, it'll bring up the options for the drop shadow. Now I can see that the drop shadow, the distance is far too I need to change the distance. Now I like to go with something around 3 and we can change the size of it too to around 3. No actually, let's not do that. It's hard to see. And uh, you know you can obviously change the angle of where the drop shadow is coming from and you can change the color but as it's a drop shadow I'm okay with it being black. We have some other options. You know you'll have to play around. Uh, basically the point is you want to try and get your text to jump out a little bit. So let's just jump over to the sub headline and give that a, a style. So I definitely want my drop shadow. Let's go two. And that's okay. 
So going back to the image that I created, I had a little kind of logo thing going on. And I'll show you where I always go and get my little icon type images. And it's very simple. It's iconfinder.com. Now when you go here, so let's say I want to find something related to dog, I type in my search. Now it's very important that we first change the license and filtering, whatever you want to call it. I always search for allowed for commercial use, no link required. So pretty much when you have that set, whatever you see, you can pretty much use. You don't have to link back and you're safe to use it. Because if you if you don't have permission, you could end up in some big trouble. So you don't want to do that. So there's not too many uh, to pick from here, but you know they have thousands of images in here. You just have to kind of do different types of searches. So here's that dog that I like. Now, if I click on it, I can download it as a PNG. And PNG is, you know, a transparent background is what you need. But with uh, this photo editor, all we need is the image URL. So I can right click it here or even on the previous screen, I can just right click and copy image URL. Coming back to here, I want to uh, layer, open image URL as layer and press Control v and press OK. And here we have our little puppy dog, whatever you want to call it. Now, no matter what tool is selected, if I hold down my Control key, you'll see that my icon changes, and it changes to the Move tool. Now, if you forget what that is, uh, we simply can select the Move tool. And I need to move my dog to where I want him to be. Now, He's right there. Now he's, you know, let's say he was a little bit too big. He actually fits in very nice. But let's say he was too big. Then we would simply go to uh, edit and then free transform. And you'll see we get the little square things. And we can change the size or, you know, rotate him a little bit just to get him how we want him. And then we'll have to press here again and confirm the changes. Apply changes, yes. Now, maybe we want to add a little uh, layer style to this image. So we'll just repeat the same process. Uh, layers, layer style, drop shadow. Mm, I don't know about drop shadow. Let's try the outer glow. Yes. And let's say we wanted to just go with a red. I don't think I would probably use a red. but So let's say we were happy with that. It looks a bit stupid having red. Basically, that's all we would need for our blog header. So once we were satisfied, we could go to File and Save. We can save it to our computer, but you have to make sure that you're saving it as a PNG. Otherwise, the you know the background is not going to be invisible. Anyway, that's how you can mess around and try and create your own graphic for your blog. And remember, it doesn't have to be just a simple. Um, blog header image, perhaps you wanted to create a little kind of image to put in your widget area or within a post. It's a great tool and don't forget about iconfinder.com. I uh, hope that helps and have a great day.